Hello, welcome. We're glad that you can join us um, on YouTube here as we present a service uh, which we do each week coming from Martin Luther Chapel here in Pensacola, New Jersey. We're an LCMS congregation and we, uh, we are just thrilled that you're with us. Uh, whether you're a member, visitor, guest, uh, that doesn't matter. We just uh, hope that you'll be spiritually encouraged and strengthened as you hear the Word of God, as you hear read, as you hear uh, singing and prayer, and as we, as we speak about that Word, that Word from God made so plain to us in Christ Jesus our Savior. So welcome, it's good to have you, and the Lord bless us as we worship. and lips so that we truly and humbly confess our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the word of God for all who repent of their sin. Come to me, all you that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11. The saying is sure and for all to receive, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.
God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadow grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The epistle this evening is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 13, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Pray the psalm responsibly. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, he does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. We stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you notice the first couple of words in the gospel for this evening, it said, after six days. After six days, well, after what? What happened six days before? It's actually an important beginning to this passage about the transfiguration of Jesus because it was six days before this that Jesus had asked his disciples the question, who do you say that I am? And after, after first explaining what other people thought, Peter then answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. The Messiah, the son of the living God. In some ways, that was the, the high point of Peter's entire three-year journey with Jesus as, as his follower during the ministry of Jesus. Jesus himself commends Peter for that answer. He commends him, and he does so because the answer is, is so right, so true, so beautifully true. You are the Messiah, the promised Savior of Israel, the one that the entire scriptures of the Old Testament had looked forward to. And not only that, you're the very son of the living God. He, he hit the nail on the head. It, it was absolutely dead on true, right. But kind of ironically, if you look closely at the rest of the story of Peter in the gospel, like the gospel of Mark, you'd have to say it was kind of downhill from there for Peter. Because after first saying so beautifully that Jesus is the Savior, the very Son of the living God, after, after saying that so wonderfully in, in as perfect a way as it can be said, the next thing that comes out of Peter's mouth is that he criticizes Jesus because Jesus goes on to say that he, the Messiah, the son of the living God, is going to have to be betrayed, is going to be suffering, he's going to die, he's going to be buried. And only after that will he rise from the dead. And, and Peter, if you remember Peter, Peter rebukes Jesus. Peter tells Jesus, no, 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 absolutely not. And Jesus, in turn, tells Peter that what he's doing right at that moment is serving Satan. You've got in mind the things of Satan, not of God. And it kind of continues with, with Peter seeming to be in a downward spiral for for so many days thereafter, all the way up until finally the, the time when, as you remember so well, when Peter boasts that he's never going to deny Jesus and then turns around and only a, a few hours later denies him three times on the night of Jesus' betrayal. It's really, it's really ironic. And and if you think about all of that, and then also look at this, this event that happened six days later, this incredible, glorious event where Jesus is on the mountaintop, and, and again, listen to Peter. You can see that even on the mountaintop, Peter's going downhill. Even on the mountaintop, Peter's just not, he's not there with Jesus. He seems unable to hear the message that, that by now Jesus has, has said very clearly um, that he's going to have to suffer, that he will have to die. And no matter how many times Jesus repeats it, it seems like Peter just can't accept it until he ends up denying Jesus that night of the betrayal. So it's worth us thinking for a little bit about this, especially as we look at this, at this story of the transfiguration. Transfiguration is in some ways a test case of, 
of biblical faith. Do you believe this story? Do you actually believe this? Because you see, this story is, it's showing us nothing less than the future. It's showing us Jesus in his eternal glory. Jesus speaking to people of the past who've died, who are with the Lord there on the mountaintop. It's the voice of the Father coming out of a cloud. This is my son. Listen to him. But of course, Peter, somehow or another, I mean, he kind of gets it, but he doesn't really get it. His great idea is, oh, wow, you know, this, let's just stay here. Good thing we're here, Lord, because we'll build you some tents. We'll build you some tabernacles, some places for you to stay so we can just remain here. And that's what shows you that Peter's still going downhill. And what, well, in what way? Well, it's, it's that Peter, Peter's, he's just, he's into the glory. He's into the grandeur. He's into the might and the power. But he's deaf and dumb to the message that there will have to be suffering. And that's where we need to pay attention. Because you notice at the end of this event, Jesus is telling Peter and James and John, just don't talk about this. Don't talk about this until after the story's over, after he's risen from the dead. And at least that, Peter and the rest, they, they seem to follow along. But we should see, first of all, just how grand this event is, where they see Jesus full authority, an authority that's greater than Moses and Elijah. It's, it's quite clear that they are consulting with him. They are talking to him. He's, he's the one who's at the center. And of course, that's absolutely emphatic when the voice of the Father speaks. This is my son, my beloved son, whom I love. Listen to him. So they see Jesus transfigured. They see he really is the son of God and what that means. I mean, he's glowing with heaven itself, with, with the pure face of divinity. They're seeing, whether they recognize it or not, their own future. A glimpse into, into what heaven must be like in some way or another because the past and the future come together. It's all together, and it's all centered in Jesus. Only it's not just a passing moment on a mountaintop. It's forever. But what nobody is able to see here, and least of all Peter, is that the time for that glory is not yet, and it will come only after suffering and death. That's the truth that has Peter continuing to spiral down that there must be suffering and death. That Christ has come not simply to wow the crowds or even to wow his disciples, but to pay the price to make the sacrifice that the world requires. And so what they need and what they get is simply the command to be quiet and listen. Listen to him because it will take a while for this to sink in. This message of the cross, this message of the necessity of sacrifice, that the, that the world cannot be made right with wonderful, glorious events alone, that the world can only be made right when there's a sacrifice and Christ has come to make that sacrifice. And so as grand and as wonderful as this transfiguration is, it's a glimpse at what lies ahead, but it dare not distract from what must be done. And so Jesus, Jesus leads them down off the mountain. They're not there to, to go camping on the mountaintop in, in a heavenly glory. They will come down, they will see him again, 
with his ordinary humanity. And they will follow him because he's going to lead the way to Jerusalem, even though he knows that that's where the suffering will take place. And Peter's just not ready for it. Peter is not ready to accept that. As a matter of fact, he won't be until, until it is all finished. Until Jesus himself says from the cross, it is finished and gives up his spirit. Until the sacrifice is paid, until, until the forgiveness is won, and then until the resurrection shows that yes, it is now done and it's complete. So, well, what about us? Well, let's listen to what Peter says many years later. Talking about this same day, he says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have now something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Listen to him, said the father. And so Peter and the others, James and John, they followed him and they kept listening. They listened and listened and listened. And finally, yes, finally, yes, it dawned on them. The day dawned and the morning star rose in their hearts. And then notice what Peter says to you and to me. They were finally transfigured in the way that counts in this world. They were transfigured or transformed as Paul would write about. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. And what do they they point us to? What does Peter point us to here? Well, the father said, listen to him. Listen to the son. And Peter points us to the scriptures where we listen to the son. Where we hear the son where we hear the Son speaking throughout his earthly ministry, where we hear him speaking in advance through apostles and prophets of the past, through Moses and Elijah and others of the Old Testament. Listen to him. That's the word. And what we will hear and see again and again is the necessity of his sacrifice for us. We will see again and again how fallen we are that ultimately we're not a bit better than Peter. We too, we want to be be where the glory is. We want Christian life to be glorious. We want Christian life to mean everything goes well all the time. But, well, that's just not the Savior we're following. And so just as he went to the cross before the resurrection and before the glory that lasts. So he says to us, it'll be through much tribulation that you too will enter the kingdom of heaven. And that means the constant call to take up our own cross to follow him. And you know, that's why why transfiguration is such a a good thing to remember right before we, we start Lent, which is no more than a custom but it can be a very beneficial custom if it's time for us to to think about a couple things. First of all, our own fallibility, our sin, and the death that follows. So on Ash Wednesday, the words every year are, remember your dust, and to dust you're going to return. That's who we are. We're fallen, we're sinful. And our life in this world is a passing thing. We are dust. To dust we'll return. But we also have a Savior, a Savior who took up his cross, a Savior who went the way of suffering and death, who came into this world for one reason only, and that was to bear our humanity so that he might bear our sins. That's the Savior that we worship. That's the Savior that the Father tells us to listen to. 
The Lord Jesus is the Lord Jesus who went to the cross and whose resurrection followed his sacrifice for us. And so again, the only thing Lent is finally good for is remembering our need and remembering our Savior and how it is that he does his saving. He doesn't do it by, by kind of grabbing us and saying, here, I'm going to make I'm going to make everything in your life perfect. No, he just doesn't. He says, take up your cross and follow me. He calls us to be his disciples, to follow him, to follow him obediently, even when we don't want to obey, to follow him repentantly, knowing our need to repent of our sins. And yes, to follow him joyfully, but not with the false joy of this world, which is only there when everything's going great, but with the true joy and the true peace that, that carries you through the times when everything's not going great. Because you have Christ, who suffered and died for you, whose death was for your forgiveness, whose resurrection was your promise that yes, yes, it will be through tribulation, but we will enter the kingdom of heaven. And so it is. Jesus is transfigured before their eyes. And he intends to transfigure and transform each one of us. To change us day by day throughout this life. Away from the attitudes that we soak up from the world that say, oh, oh, it's only when everything is going well. Only then is God really with you. No. God is with you precisely as we too go through times of cross and tribulation. And so let's come down from the mountain, so to speak, not into confusion, but into discipleship, to follow Jesus. He is the real Lord and Savior, to listen to him, for his word is truth. His word is hope and peace and joy. His word will see us through. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace that surpasses all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, of light of light, very God of the very God, begotten not by name, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, you revealed your glorious Son in his transfiguration on the holy mountain. We give you thanks and praise for that day where you, where you enabled us to see heaven, where we could see where, where the past and the future meet all in Christ Jesus. Open our eyes of faith. Let us see that, as astounding as it is, that, that indeed is the truth. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us at all times to listen to Jesus, so that we also follow him and understand that the way to eternal life includes a pathway of tribulation and cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, when Moses and Elijah appeared at our Lord's transfiguration, you were showing us that Jesus had fulfilled the law and the prophets. And so send your blessing upon all who proclaim the message of Christ Jesus, who is the fulfillment of all things and, and whose holy life and death have atoned for the sins of the world. Uh, give us faith in Christ Jesus, in his death and resurrection, and make us faithful disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you give us the gift of a family and friends in Christ, people that we, that we go through life together, and people who urge us to remain faithful to you. Help us, Lord, in our relationships to be among those who call one another to Christ, who pray for one another, who support and bless one another in our lives and our conduct, our words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you establish all earthly authority. And so we pray that you bless those who have been given responsibility to govern and to rule in our day and in our places, in our land, in this country, our states, our cities. We ask you, Lord, that you would guide them so that they serve you in integrity and honorably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kind Father, we ask your comfort and your strength for those who are suffering, who are suffering, who are sick, who are hospitalized, or enduring other crises. We pray especially today, Lord, for Alan, for Ashley, for B and Steve, for Bob, Carol, and Charles, and Cheryl. We pray for Cedric, and Connie, and Doris, and Dorothy Ruglis, and Dorothy Tallis. We ask you, Lord, to be with Ed, with Hannah, with Elizabeth, and her friends with Harriet and Harry, with, with Jane and Jean and Jeff, with Jerry and Bev, with Joe and Judy and Kyle, with Marge and Marty and Marianne, be with Matt and B. Embers, with, with Patty and her husband and, and their co-workers who are all isolated because of coronavirus, with Matthew and Mildred, with, with Eric and his friend who are isolated to, and have coronavirus with Nancy and Paul and Peter, with Sarah and Steve, and with all others whom we name before you on our hearts. Be with them, Lord. In your mercy, we pray that you would grant them healing, but according to your good and gracious will. And above all, keep them in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection. And with all the faithful, look forward to the glory of life eternal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us. You have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Give us your Holy Spirit, day by day, in rich measure, so that we would attend to your word, believe and trust in all of your promises, and live the lives that you would have us to live, 
as your servants now and always. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.